I want to talk to you about Mrs. Weathers. When I was in sixth grade, my family moved from western Pennsylvania to northern New Jersey. This is a hard time for a kid to move, right before the beginning of junior high school. When I got to Cook Elementary School, I was assigned to Mrs. Weathers' homeroom. But the first thing that happened after the bell rang was that all the kids started lining up at the door. It turned out that the 80-some sixth graders at Cook School were divided into four groups for reading and math instruction every day, and those groups were organized by ability level. So it wasn't until after lunch and after recess when the full group of Mrs. Weathers' homeroom met together. And what did Mrs. Weathers do? She read to us. She read to us from adolescent novels. Some of them were funny, some were scary, exciting, intriguing, mysterious, and some were sad. And Mrs. Weathers read well. She didn't do funny voices. She wasn't melodramatic, but she was engaged with the characters and with the stories. When a story was poignant, you could hear tears in her voice. And we were engaged right along with her. It wasn't until years later, when I was a fifth and sixth grade teacher, that I realized what Mrs. Weathers was doing. She wasn't reading to us to make us better readers, although maybe it did. She was reading to us to make us better people. She was giving us a chance to have a common experience and to form together as a group. She was giving us a chance to experience a world bigger than we were. In my own time as a fifth and sixth grade teacher, I can assure you that I read to my class every day for the same reasons that Mrs. Weathers did, and I hope with the same results. So thank you, Mrs. Weathers.